apologize for the temperature in here. I got many of you that normally are cold probably are very grateful for the warmer temperature. Those that are normally hot probably are not. <laughs> but turn your Bibles to the book of Revelation, please. Chapter 4, Revelation chapter 4 tonight. They evidently changed the thermostats uh, for them in here and uh, Prior to that, the air conditioner was working fine, so I, we don't know what's wrong with the thermostats, but they must not be working like they should. But we are very sorry, and hopefully yeah, it won't be too. Usually the temperature this way kind of lulls people to sleep. So if you see someone sleeping beside you, you can poke them in the elbow and say, hey, wake up. <laughs> All right, Revelation chapter 4, we're going to read verses 1 through 11. If you in your bulletin, in your prayer sheet there, there is a notes for tonight. hope you'll take those out. And look at what it says here in chapter 4. Let's look in verse 1, and then we'll read verse 11, and then we'll back up and look at them individually, please. Revelation chapter 4, beginning verse 1. It said, After this I looked, and behold, a door was open in heaven, and a voice which I heard was as it were a trumpet talking with me. 
which said, Come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. Now, we talked about that. Many believe that's talking about the rapture. We're talking about the rapture, a trump shall sound, the dead in Christ shall rise first. And don't no, talk about here, a trump shall sound, says, Come up hither. So many believe that refers to the rapture. But verse 2, John said, Immediately I was in the Spirit, and behold, a throne was set up in heaven, and one that sat on the throne. And he that sat, he that sat was to look upon like jasper and a sardine stone, and there was a rainbow round about the throne and the sight like an emerald. Verse 4, And round about the throne were four and twenty seats. Upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting, clothed in white raiment, and they had on their head heads crowns of gold. And out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunders and voices. And there were seven lamps of burning uh, before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. And, be, and before the throne was a sea of glass like unto crystal. And in the midst of the throne, round about the throne, were four beasts full of eyes before and behind. And the first beast was like a lion, the second beast like a calf, the third beast had the, had the face of a man, and the fourth beast was like a flying eagle. And the four beasts, which had the six wings about, and they were full of eyes within, and rest not day and night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was, was is, and is to come. And when the beasts give glory and honor and thanks to him that sat on the throne, who liveth forever and ever, and the four and twenty elders fall down before him that sat on the throne and worshiped him that liveth forever and ever, and cast their crowns before the throne, saying, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. Now, if you look at your notes there, please, we're going to look at four things from this passage of Scripture. We're going to look at the person on the throne, the picture of the throne, the persons round about the throne, and then conclude by the purpose of those on the throne. So let's begin, first of all, in, in verse 2, the person on the throne. And notice in, ver in letter A there, John's vision of heaven. We notice there in verse Verse 2, it says, Immediately I was in the Spirit, which means he had a vision. He was not physically taken up, but in a vision he was taken to heaven, and he shares with us what he saw in heaven. And it's uh, talking about John's vision of heaven. A vision of John was taken up to heaven. Letter B, and the vision was one on the throne. In the latter part of verse 2, it said, One that sat on the throne, verse 3, and he that sat was to look upon like a jasper and a sardine stone. This refers, didn't say he was a sardine stone, but like that. This refers to the appearance, the thrones over our appearance was one of great beauty and color. What John saw, evidently it was a beautiful sight, one of great beauty and color, and said the one that sat on the throne was like a jasper, a stone and a sardine stone, referring to great beauty. And the color there. And I want you to notice something. These two stones mentioned here, that the one set upon the throne was likened unto, were used elsewhere in Scripture. Hope you write it down. It's used, first of all, at the breastplate of the high priest. These two stones were also seen on the breastplate of a high priest. We will not turn there. I'll let you turn and get a chance. Mention Exodus 28. There were 12 stones on the breastplate of the high priest. Each stone represented a different tribe of Israel. And two of these stones are mentioned on the breastplate of the high priest. The next place are found, interesting, was Satan's covering before his fall. And Ezekiel 28, before he fell, referred to his covering. Interesting, the same stones in the breastplate of the high priest is also the covering that Satan had before he fell before he was cast out. And these two stones were also mentioned in the covering of Satan. The third place they're found, known as the breastplate of the high priest, Satan's covering before his fall. The next one is the foundation of New Jerusalem. You can look that up and get a chance. Revelation 21. The foundation of 12 manner of precious stones, and two of those stones were mentioned 
was that of a jasper and a sardine stone. So evidently these stones are very important to God, that he appeared those like unto them when John saw him in heaven. The breastplate of the high priest, God directed him. Two of the stones mentioned there, Satan's covering. Remember, he was a beautiful, the most beautiful angel in heaven. Two of them mentioned in his covering. And the foundation of the new Jerusalem. So I hope you get a chance to look up those scriptures. You'll see and look for those two stones mentioned there. So that was the one sitting upon the throne. The, the person, number two, and look at the picture of the throne. The picture of the throne we see in the latter part of verse 3. And notice a rainbow around God's throne. You know, I think a beautiful sight we, we can see here on earth is a rainbow. You see that in the sky and all the beautiful colors it has. And this was what John saw. He went to heaven, a, a rainbow. It said, there was a rainbow round about the throne and the sight like unto an emerald. Which means, notice, first of all, the rainbow was a circle round about the throne. My understanding is, if you go high enough in the sky by, by a plane or a jet, and you look down the earth and you see a rainbow, the rainbow, which we see, is always just a bow. But from heaven, it's a circle. And that's what John saw when he saw the Lord. He didn't see a bow over the throne. It was round about the throne. So like the rainbows here on earth that you look at from the sky downward, what he saw around about the throne was a rainbow with a color. So again, the, the green color of the emerald added further beauty to the scene. So the more John describes what he saw, the more beautiful it becomes. An emerald, a jasper, a sardine, just a beautiful color. And round about that was a, a circle, a rainbow itself. Quite amazing. So what John is doing, John, the best he can in human language, is describing what he saw in heaven. And notice it says it was like unto. It didn't say it was. What he saw, God was like unto a, a, a jasper, a sardine stone. What he saw was like unto. And so the best way he could in human language what his own understanding, he likened, he saw what he saw, he likened the beautiful things on this earth. It was a rainbow around God's throne. Number B, or letter B, it was an impressive scene. Again, the scene he saw when he looked in the vision was an impressive scene. Three things about it. First of all, there was lightning and thunder. Lightning and thunder. In verse 5, it said, Out of the throne proceeded lightnings, I mean, they're plural, and thunderings and voices. Uh, have you ever been, uh, I'm sure you have, you live here in Florida, when there's a lot of lightning and thunders, and literally it shakes your whole house when it thunders, and lightning lights up everything around it? That's what John likened God unto when he looked in heaven. The scene was quite impressive. Not only beautiful, but the scene of heaven enhanced by the flashes of lightning and the rumblings of thunder. Again, just making this a, just an awesome scene that John saw when he was taken up to heaven. So he saw the lightning and thunder. Number two, he saw blazing lamps. Blazing lamps. The middle part, five. He said, there were seven lamps of fire burning. The word burning means blazing. Before the throne. And notice what the burning lamps were. It says, which are the seven spirits of God? And what is that? The seven spirits of God. We saw that before already in Revelation chapter 1, verse 4. But these seven lamps were said to be seven spirits of God. These should be understood to represent the Holy Spirit rather than seven individual spirits. Hold your finger right here. Go with me now to Isaiah 11, please. Isaiah 11. These lamps, he said, were the seven spirits of God. Again, he's not talking about seven individual spirits. This is a description of the Holy Spirit. And we see this in Isaiah 11. Look with me in verse 2. That will be verse 1. Isaiah 11, verse 1. Then the seven spirits of the Holy Spirit, seven characteristics of the Holy Spirit is mentioned in verse 2. 
In verse 1, it says, And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his root. The rod of Jesse, of course, the Lord Jesus Christ. But verse 2, and notice there's seven characteristics of the Spirit mentioned here. I hope you write them down and you unline them. The first one, and the Spirit of the what? Boy, you're quiet on me. Do you have it? <laughs> This says this, and look, I don't think the verse, just the reference is on the screen, but you need to look at it in your Bible. In verse 2, the Spirit of the Lord, that's the first characteristics, shall rest upon him. The next one, the Spirit of what? Wisdom. Number three, and understanding. And four, the Spirit of counsel. Five, and might. Six, the Spirit of knowledge. And seven, and the fear of the Lord. These are seven characteristics of the Holy Spirit. And I believe when what John saw, he said he saw seven lamps burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. I think he's referring to the Holy Spirit, and he can to refer in the seven characteristics of the Holy Spirit mentioned here in chapter 11, verse 2. So what he saw was an impressive scene, lightnings and thunder, blazing lamps, which are the Holy Spirit, and number three, he saw a sea of glass. Go back now, if you would please, back to Revelation. A sea of glass in verse six. And before the throne was a sea of glass like unto a what? Crystal. Notice again, another description of a beautiful, beautiful stone. Now, there is no sea in heaven as far as water in heaven. We read about that in Revelation 21. But when he saw with such a reflection, it looked like a reflection, a sea as far as you could see of a, a glass and all of this was reflecting the beautiful colors of the stones that Christ and what John saw was likened unto. A sea of glass, clear as crystal, was before the throne and reflected all the brilliant colors of the entire heavenly scene. So it must have been some just awesome scene that John saw that of lightning and thunder probably reflecting off the sea of glass, the blazing lamps, and also all the other stones he mentioned there. What an impressive scene he saw there. So that's the person of the throne we saw. Then we saw the impressive scene. Now, number three, Roman number three. Let's look at the persons round about the throne. The persons round the throne. Look in verse four. It mentions two categories of persons. It says the four and the twenty and four elders. Twenty four elders those round about the throne. It says in verse 4, and round about the throne were four and twenty seats, and upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting. Now, it does not tell us exactly who or what these were, but I think the way the description he gives of them, I believe the twenty-four elders represent the church, the body of believers, Christians. I'm going to show you why, but notice what the characteristics of these four elders. Number one, they were dressed in white apparel. It said in verse 4, 20 elders sitting clothed in white raiment. We're going to show you more about that in just a moment. So these four and 20 elders were clothed in white apparel, white raiment. Number two, they were wearing what? Gold crowns. They had on their heads crowns of gold. So again, he's given a description of these elders clothed in white apparel, wearing gold crowns. And number three, the elders are believed to represent, I said with you, the church that was raptured prior to this time and rewarded. In other words, the elders are believed to be represent the church. The body of Christ was raptured out prior to this Time and rewarded. They were rewarded because they were wearing crowns. And three reasons why. Remember, what were they wearing? White apparel. They were dressed in white. They were dressed in white. Look over in Revelation 19, please. Revelation 19. Here is a description of the church that called the bride, the body of Christ. Revelation 19. In verse, let's look in verse 7. Remember the 24 elders, they're arrayed in white, a raiment of white, a 
peril. In Revelation 19, verse 7, let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his wife hath made herself what? Now, who's the wife, the bride of Christ? The church. Then notice he describes them in verse 8. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in what? Fine linen, clean and white. For the, the fine linen is the righteousness of the what? Saints. So these four and twenty elders were arrayed in fine, white apparel, white raiment, which indicates they could be the bride. And number, number two, they were wearing crowns. They were wearing golden crowns. And in the Bible, when you see the word crown, in the Greek language, it's either referred to as stephanos, which is a victor's crown, or it's a diadem, which is a sovereign king's crown. In this case, when, when it talks about in verse uh, 4, on their heads, crowns of gold, it talks about uh, stephanos, victor's crown. In other words, referring to these ones who were awarded the victor's crown. It was not a king, but because what they did in the life on earth, God gave them a crown. If you notice, remember this part of the crowns we receive as Christians here on the earth? And these believers were wearing crowns. Again, Stephanos, a victor's crown. The crown seemed to indicate that the elders had been judged and rewarded. It was what happens at the rapture, all believers are taken to heaven. And when we go to heaven, what will happen immediately when we get to heaven? The judgment seat of Christ. The judgment seat of Christ will occur the moment we're taken to heaven. Remember, during that time is the tribulation on the earth. At the judgment seat of Christ, God will give crowns to those who have served him. So, again, indicating these were probably the church. And number three, the letter C, the third reason why it's believed to represent the church, not only because they were dressed in white, wearing crowns, and they sang a song of redemption. They sang a song of redemption. Look in Revelation 5, verse 9. Revelation 5, verse 9, please. Revelation 5, fact, verse 8, and then verse 9. These 24 elders were in white, dressed with crowns, and singing a song of redemption. Revelation 5, verse 9. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts, and notice the four and twenty elders fell down before the throne, having every one of them harps and golden vows of elders, which are the prayers of the what? Saints, verse 9, and they sang, and they sung a new song, saying, Thou worthy to take the book, to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain, and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood, out of a kindred tongue, people, and nation, has made us unto our God kings and priests, who shall reign on the earth. And angels cannot sing that song, cannot sing the song of redemption, because they've never been redeemed. Only the believer, the child of God, can sing the song of redemption because they have been redeemed by the blood of Christ. So again, three reasons why we believe the 24 elders were representing the church because the white apparel, they were wearing crowns of gold, which represented they were uh, judged and rewarded, and they sang a song of redemption. Next, again, we're talking about the persons round about the throne. They saw the 24 elders. And now verse 6, please. Then it talks about four creatures or four beasts mentioned here. In the middle part of verse 6, it's in the midst of the throne, Revelation 4, verse 6, in the midst of the throne, round about the throne, were four beasts full of eyes before and behind. So the person around the throne, first of all, he saw four and 20 elders, which is believed to be you and I in heaven. The 24 represents Christians that are in heaven. But he also saw four creatures called four beasts here, full of eyes before and behind. And notice their appearance in verse 7, the appearance of these creatures. Verse 7, 
It said the first beast was like unto a what? A lion. It was go through this quickly, then we'll fill in these blanks. The second like unto a calf. The third beast was the face of a man. The fourth beast was like unto a flying eagle. So letter A, they had four different appearances. Fill in the blank there, please. One appeared as a lion. Number two, one appeared as a calf. Number three, one of the beasts appeared as a man. And number four, one appeared as an eagle. Notice they didn't say that's what they were. It was like unto that. And many believe, I believe this will be on the screen there, many believe they represent Christ as revealed in the four Gospels. In Matthew, how was Christ revealed? As a lion of the tribe of Judah. In Mark, Christ is revealed as a servant, an ox, as a servant of Yahweh. In Luke, he's represented as a human humanity of Christ. And in John, Christ is presented as an eagle, as the divine son of God. So these four different appearances of these creatures, many believe they represent the Lord Jesus Christ himself. As it revealed in the book of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Another about their appearance, they have different appearances, but also they had six wings. Does that sound familiar? Can you think of any other creatures in heaven that had six wings? We'll go look at that in just a moment. Had six wings, letter B. They had four different appearances. Had six wings, and letter C, they were full of eyes. They were eyes full within. That was they could able to see all around them. See all around them. Am I going too fast? Are you able to keep up? Okay. Their appearance number two. Now look at their actions, the actions of these creatures. Interesting. They never rested. They never rest. It goes on to say, eyes full and it said, and they rest not day and night. They never slept, they never rested. And also they never rested, let it be repeating the same words. They said the same thing over and over again. They want people to know those who approach the throne of God. The, let me look up before you read any further. What characteristic, what attribute of God is mentioned in the Old Testament more than any other? God is holy. In the Old Testament, there are many, several attributes of God. He's love, he's merciful, he's compassionate. But the attribute of God is mentioned more than any other in the Old Testament. God is holy. And notice what these creatures in heaven were saying. Rest day or night, it said, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. These creatures mentioned here, I'm going to show you where they're also mentioned in the Old Testament. Again, they never rested and were repeating the same words over and over again. Holy, holy, holy. So if you have your Bibles in Revelation, go with me now to Ezekiel chapter 1, please. Ezekiel chapter 1. Your notes, note most say it says Ezekiel 14. Erase the four there. Ezekiel 1 and verse 4 through 14. Ezekiel 1. Ezekiel also saw a vision in heaven. And notice what he saw, and it's, is it believed that he saw the same creatures that John saw revealed to us in the book of Revelation. In Ezekiel chapter 1. Go look in verse 1, please. Ezekiel 1, verse 1. Let's begin there. I'll give you a couple moments to find that. You know, sometimes the Old Testament books are difficult to find because we're not as familiar with those as we are with the New Testament. But Ezekiel chapter 1, verse 1. Now it came to pass in the 13th year of the fourth month, in the fifth day of the month, Isaiah, Ezekiel said, I was among the captives by the river of Chabar, that the heavens were open and I saw visions of God. And look down in verse, uh, verse uh, 4. It said, And I looked, and behold, a whirlwind came out of the north, and he saw in a vision of God, 
looked, a whirlwind came out of the north, a great cloud, a fire burning in itself, the brightness about it, and out of the mist thereof the color of amber and the mist of fire. Verse 5. Also in the mist thereof came the likeness of four living, what? Creatures, and notice their appearance. And there was appearance they had likened unto a man. Verse 5, verse 6. Everyone had four faces. Everyone had four wings. Now, the difference was that the ones in Revelation were six wings. But if you would skip over to verse 10. And for the likeness of their faces, they, the four had the face of a man, the face of a lion. On the right side, the, the four had the face of an ox. On the left side, the four had the face of a what? Eagle. So it had four faces with the same appearance as those in the book of Revelation. Now, if you would please go to the book of Isaiah. Isaiah in chapter 6. You have Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel. So right before Ezekiel is Jeremiah. And before Jeremiah is Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 6. When you find that, look for please. Notice we saw the description of these creatures. And we saw their actions. Two things about the actions said they never rested. But they were saying the same thing over and over again. What were they saying? Holy, holy, holy. And look what Isaiah saw in chapter 6. Look with me in verse 1. Isaiah 6, verse 1. In the year King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon the throne, high and lifted up, as train filled the temple. Verse 2. Above it stood the what? Seraphims. Now notice this plural there. This is a certain kind of angelic being. It's a seraph. Seraphim is plural. Like do you ever heard the word cherub or cherubim? Cherubim is plural for cherub. So he saw many of these angelic creatures called seraphs. Each one had six wings. With twain he covered his face. With twain he covered his feet. With twain he did fly. And verse 3. And one cried unto another. What's he, what did he say? Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts, and earth is full of his glory. So again, saying the same thing as the creatures that John saw in the book of Revelation. In other words, people believe what John saw is what Isaiah saw. What Isaiah saw could have been what Ezekiel saw. Again, these creatures must have been awesome. And I'm sure it could have been frightening to see such creatures. All right. Number four, number four, we first saw the person on the throne. Then we saw the picture of the throne. Then we saw the persons round about the throne. And lastly, number four, let's look at the purpose of those on the throne. The purpose of those on the throne. And look with me, if you would please, in verse nine, Revelation four, verse nine. And when the beasts give glory and honor and thanks to him that sat on the throne, who liveth forever and ever, and the four and twenty elders fall down before the throne, that sat on the throne, and worshiped him that liveth forever and ever, and cast their crowns before the throne, thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory, honor, and power, for thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they were created. So the purpose of the throne, letter A, is to give to the one on the throne five things. Number one, glory. Those round about the throne to give God glory. I think you and I ought to get in practice of doing that now, shouldn't we? Is give God glory. When something happens in your life, instead of complaining about it, give God glory. How many believe that God wants what's best for us? How many believe that all things work together for what? Good. So when that, if that's true, then we ought to give God glory for what he allows in our life. Number two is honor. We saw that they bring glory and honor. These four and twenty elders will give honor to the Lord. Number three, thanks. Give thanks. We saw in verse nine, they give glory and honor and thanks to him that sat on the throne. And number four, worship. Worship. In verse 10, it said, And the four and twenty elders fall down before the Lord and worshiped him that liveth forever. And number five, recognition. Recognition. What do you mean recognition, Pastor? 
How did these that were before the throne give recognition to God? The latter part of verse 10, and cast their crowns before the throne. Remember, look up here. They were, these four and 24 hours were wearing golden crowns. The ground, crowns were rewards for what they'd done on the earth. And so when you go to heaven, God's going to reward you at the judgment seat. And the Bible talks about five different crowns he's going to give us. And what do we do with those crowns? We will take them and cast them at his feet. And what are we, by doing so, what are we doing? We're recognizing the one who's truly worthy. So God's going to reward you for what you do for him while you're on the earth with crowns. And I believe many believers have many crowns. So does that mean we're going to walk around heaven with crowns all the time? We will turn around and before the throne, take our crowns and lay them at his feet. And by saying, we recognize that you are truly worthy of any praise and glory and honor. And how about you? Any good in me is because of him. Any bad in me is because of me. <laughs> So when, I'm when God recognizes the good that I did for him on the earth and gives me a crown, I have the honor, and you will too, to turn around and say, listen, the one true worthy is not me. It's him. The one that sits upon the throne. Recognition. So the purpose of those on the throne, to give to the one on the throne glory, honor, thanks, worship, and recognition, and let her be the reason for giving in verse 11 because he is worthy. He is worthy. Why do we give him glory? Why do we give him honor and thanks and worship and recognition? Because he is worthy. It said in verse 11, Thou art worthy, O Lord. And the second reason, because he created all things. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were what? Created. Now, I know went through that quickly. It is 8 o'clock. It's time for a stop. So what I encourage you to do, take this home with you, go back over it. Read through this chapter again, go over your notes, and look again, again, what John saw. He saw the throne, the person upon the throne, those around about the throne, and the purpose of those at the throne. Look that over again, and then, if you would please, read chapter 5 between now and next Wednesday which we'll cover that next week. Let's bow together, please, as we close. Father in heaven, we thank you for all that you do for us. We thank you that you are a wonderful, merciful, compassionate, loving God. And Father, truly, any recognition that we may one day receive from you, we have the privilege to turn around and, and give you the recognition of that. Because truly you are the one worthy of glory and honor and praise. Father, may we not only do that when we go to heaven, may we do that and practice that while on the earth. That any recognition we may receive on this earth from man, may we reflect it back to you and let people know that, that what I've able to accomplish because of what you, of you and what you do in our lives. In Christ's name we pray, amen. God bless you. Thank you for coming and we'll see you Sunday. And hopefully again next Wednesday night. Again, hopefully the air conditioning will be working fine on Sunday, okay? <laughs>